Welcome back guys. This week we're going to talk about the fear of confrontation and how a failure to understand the true cause of, of the fear of confrontation, mostly from the psychology establishment, indicates, you guessed it, a deeper misunderstanding about psychology in general. You guys know that I often criticize cognitive behavioral therapy and for good reason. Not that it's incorrect necessarily, but it's only a piece of the puzzle and I would argue a small piece of the puzzle at that. It can be useful for dealing with things like arachnophobia, agoraphobia, claustrophobia, you know, fear of going on of public transportation. It can be useful for that in a, in a typical CBT exposure therapy kind of way, you know, a pr progressive desensitization to the feared stimulus, although I would argue that doesn't really manage the anxiety in general, but that's for another topic. But exposure therapy, typical CBT methods don't work that well for the fear of confrontation. I think that indicates there's a lot going on beneath the surface of the fear of confrontation. So if you have a fear of confrontation, usually not about confrontation in general, in general, usually it's about a deeper topic like when a girl breaks up with you and you go on a six month tailspin probably wasn't about the girl or her breaking up with you then there was a deeper issue there triggered by the girl breaking up with you or this is also happens when uh, you know kids like high school kids are bullied and they commit suicide yeah, the bullying probably didn't commit the suicide there are issues there beneath the surface that were triggered by the bullying perhaps but it didn't really cause the suicide. I think that's what's going on here with the fear of confrontation is this is a high order concept. So typical exposure therapy CBT methods don't work that well. So what is going on beneath the surface of the fear of confrontation? What do we need to manage first before we can really manage the fear of confrontation? Three things. And I think the first thing is just an acceptance of anger in general. A lot of us have been raised in this Western culture that anger is somehow wrong. Now, we haven't been taught this explicitly, but it's implicitly taught, I think. A lot of times when we see people get angry, they're not being angry at all, or they are, but they're only being one kind of angry, and that is hostility. They're using their anger specifically in, in a destructive way. Well, that's only one way that we can use anger. There's a mature way to use anger, to be assertive with it, to get your needs met, to get injustices rectified, uh, but if we don't see it that often or whenever people are angry, it doesn't end up that well for them, then we will just unconsciously decide to not be angry. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people are in denial about their ang anger. Often people come into therapy and they say, oh, I'm not an angry guy. And then it only takes a couple weeks for them to realize, oh, there's a lot of anger here. I am an angry guy. Yeah, it's okay. We're all angry guys. It's just about how well do you accept it and how well do you manage it. And anger is going to be really useful when it comes to managing confrontation because you need anger to manage this anxiety. As I've talked about before, it's very difficult to feel both fear and anger at the same time. So you're going to need anger to help you confront your, well, that's what anger does, right? It revs up your body, dopamine, adrenaline, and helps you to manage anxiety. So if you don't get angry, it's going to be difficult to confront the people who you want to confront. Let's just say it's your boss piling a bunch of work on your desk late on a Friday night and he wants you to stay all weekend and it's not even work that you would typically do. Um, and you're afraid to say something to him. Another reason, another uh, yeah, reason for the fear of uh, confrontation or, or something that makes confrontation a fear that's a little bit deeper than other fears is there's a fear of exposure there. There's a fear of a part of you that you don't really like being exposed when you face your fear of confrontation because there's always the chance if you confront somebody, especially if it's your boss or perhaps a beautiful woman, someone who you perceive to have more power than you have, there's always a chance they're going to come back over top and you say, no, I'm not going to do this work. You know, give this to Frank. This is his job. I'm not going to ruin my weekend because you can't hire the right people or, you know, put the right team around me, whatever it is. There's always the chance your boss is going to come over top of you and say, who are you to get angry anyways? Don't you remember? You're the kid who peed his pants in the fifth grade, you know, whatever it happens to be. 
But until you manage these issues, until you manage these latent emotions that you are uncomfortable with, then it's like, okay, I'm going to go confront this other person, but I'm using this instrument, me, who I'm ultimately uncomfortable with. So a lot of this comes back to managing your own issues and a lot of shame, really. And you know how I define shame is this ghost that just kind of floats around dysregulated emotion. You know, failure is really good for this. And this is why ex-jocks have less of a fear of confrontation because they fail. They try really hard. They practice all week and the, to beat their, their rival uh, school and they lose. Losing, failure, helps you manage. It makes you more accepting of the failure, helps you manage any weakness that you may perceive that you have you know, in a healthy way. I mean, it's, it's accepting failure in the sense that, yeah, failure happens and probably it's not that big of a deal or it's less of a deal than you think it is. And the third reason that makes uh, the fear of conf confrontation particularly difficult to manage, maybe indicates there's more going on beneath the surface of the fear of confrontation is it's usually the result of a general sense of disconnection that people have of, in, you know, in general. You know, confrontation, it's just a connection. It's a con connection with somebody else. Often when we talk about connection, it's in a feminine way of, oh, kumbaya, uh, Pearl Jam concert, three hour bro hug, kind of, let's all get in a drum circle here. That is one aspect of connection. That is a feminine aspect of connection, important. But there's another aspect of connection and confrontation encapsulates a lot of that. It's essentially somebody infringes on who you are. They infringe on your boundary or what you at least perceive your boundary to be. And you say, no, that's actually not cool. This is who I am. This is who you are. Don't do this. Your boss piles a bunch of work on your desk. No, I, I have plans this weekend. Th this is actually you messed up. And now you're piling work onto my desk because, you know, it's a connection. We don't typically see it that way, but that's what it is. So Look, and maybe it's a high level connection too, or maybe it's a difficult connection to make. And a lot of us, we go, you know, six days or six weeks or six months, six freaking years without a genuine connection with somebody. And then this level eight connection comes on top of us in the form of the work of the boss piling a bunch of work on our desk. And we don't know what to do because we haven't even made a level two connection in the past several years. So it's going to be very difficult to make a level eight connection. So there's just a general sense of disconnection that I see, particularly with guys who have a, a fear around uh, confronting, you know, whether it's other men or other women. But I think this indicates, you know, a bigger issue with psychology that we need to get right. You know, something that I think cognitive behavioral therapy with the typical exposure therapy met methods, this was what they miss is they think that the, fear of confrontation that's just about this one situation or this one relationship you have with this one person when usually it's not about that and why deaf psychology what we do here at animus empire what i why i think it's superior is because it doesn't focus on the situation so much we can but ultimately it's about getting you to the right headspace getting you to the right energy level let's just say if you want to put it in a sedona kind of way from which you're going to be much more likely to uh, confront the confrontation to confront the thing that you fear right that's what this is about and I think this is why what CBT misses and why it when it does work it only works in the short term you really want to go for the long-term real change you got to do the deep work on yourself it's not necessarily more difficult well not anymore because at Animus Empire we actually have a methodology for depth psychology we have a way of processing your emotions um, and this is, you know, this is what we do here. So check out our groups, check out our individual therapy, animusempire.com, and I'll leave it there. And always remember that if you have a fear of confrontation, what it ultimately is a fear of is a fear of confronting who you are.